In this lecture, we'll talk about the column space of a matrix. So we've already talked about the null space of a matrix in the previous lecture. And so given an M by N matrix, the column space of A is another important related subspace. And we're going to define the column space in this lecture and compare and contrast the column space to the null space that we already talked about. So here's the definition. So given an M by N matrix A, and remember that means M rows and N columns, and let's name the columns of A. So A1, A2, and so on through AN, those are the names of the columns of the matrix capital A. The column space of A is simply the span of that set of vectors, all of the possible linear combinations of those column vectors. Now we've talked about whenever we take the span of a set of vectors, that gives us a subspace. In this case, because the matrix has M rows, each of those vectors has M entries, and so this is a subspace of RM. Now another way to think about the column space is that for any vector x in Rn, we know that a times x is a linear combination of the columns of a. So another way to think about the column space of a is that it's all of the vectors of the form a times x. So if I give you a matrix and a vector, we might ask the question, is that vector in the column space of a? So another way to think about what we're asking is, is w of the form a times x for some vector x. In other words, does a times x equals w have a solution? Well, it's hard to know how to answer that question without actually solving it. So let's solve ax equals w. So to solve this matrix equation, we're going to set up an augmented matrix, row reduce it, and see what we get. So here's the augmented matrix. We're going to start by dividing the first row by negative 8. That gives us 1, positive 1 fourth, positive 9 eighths, and negative 1 fourth. And then we're going to multiply row 1 by negative 6 and add it to row 2. It's going to give us a 0. Negative 6 times 1 fourth is negative 3 halves, plus 4 is 5 halves. Negative 6 times 9 eighths is negative 27 fourths. Add that to 8, we get 5 fourths. And then finally, negative 6 times negative 1 fourth is positive 3 halves, plus 1 is 5 halves. Next, we're going to multiply row 1 by negative 4 and add it to row 3. Again, that's going to give us a 0. Negative 4 times 1 fourth is negative 1, plus 0 is negative 1. Negative 4 times 9 eighths is negative 9 halves plus 4 is negative 1 half, and negative 4 times negative 1 fourth is positive 1, 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1. Now let's work on row 2. We're going to multiply row 2 by 2 fifths. That's going to give us 1, 1 half, and 1. And I'm just going to look for an echelon form here. Don't need to get this into reduced echelon form. And then what we can see is that if we just add row 2 to row 3, everything cancels out, we just get zeros. So what we have here is that because we don't have a pivot in the last column, there's no pivot here in the augmented column, as we've seen, that means that this matrix equation that we're trying to solve, the equation ax equals w, is consistent. It has a solution. In fact, we know more than that. There's no pivot in the third column either, which means there's a free variable. And so in fact, not only does this equation have a solution, it has lots of solutions. But remember, the question here is not, what is the solution? The question is, is there a solution? So the conclusion here is that W is in the column space of A. It is a linear combination of the columns of A. Now, if for whatever reason we wanted more information, if we wanted to know specifically in what way is it a linear combination, can you tell me what the coefficients of the linear combination would be, we can answer that question by continuing to row reduce this matrix. But if the question is just yes or no, is this a linear combination of the columns or not, we've answered that question. Now, sometimes when we take the span of a set of vectors, as we've seen, sometimes the set spans the entire vector space. So sometimes the columns of A will span all of Rm. 
In other words, ax equals b would have a solution no matter what b is. And we know how to answer that question as well. That would happen precisely when a has a pivot in every row. So let's compare and contrast the null space compared to the column space. So first of all, one thing to keep in mind is that the null space is a subspace of Rn, and the column space is a subspace of Rm. And if n and m are different, in other words, if the matrix A is not square, then these two spaces will live in completely different universes. Another thing to keep in mind is that there's an easy question and a hard question when we talk about the null space. Giving a specific vector and asking whether that vector is in the null space or not, that's an easy question to answer. All we have to do is multiply the matrix by that vector and see whether or not we get zero. So we just have to do a multiplication and see what we get. But it's a much harder question, as we saw in the previous lecture, to actually generate an element of the null space of A. For that, we have to solve the equation AX equals zero. Now for the column space, the easiness and hardness of the two questions are flipped. So just like we did in the previous example, if I give you a vector and ask whether that vector is in the column space of A, for that we have to solve an equation. Now we might not have to solve it all the way, but we definitely have to do some row reduction. And the bigger the matrix is, the harder that is. But it's a much easier question to generate an element of the column space of A. The elements of the, of the column space are just linear combinations of the columns. And so we could just make up whatever coefficients we want for the columns and if we actually calculate that, that gives us a linear combination of the columns, which gives us an element of the column space of A. Now, we often want to think about these spaces in the context of linear transformations. So if we have a linear transformation from Rn to Rm with an associated matrix capital A. As we saw previously, the null space of A is the set of all vectors V in Rn, such that T of V equals zero. So it's all of the vectors that we plug into our function and give us a zero as an answer. So in other words, the null space of A is trivial, it's just the zero vector, if and only if A has a pivot in every column, in other words, there's no free variables. And as we saw when we talked about the invertible matrix theorem, that happens if and only if T is one to one. Similarly, if we look at the column space of A in the context of this linear transformation, the column space of A is the set of all vectors in Rm that have the form t of x. Because remember, t of x is just a times x. And so this column space is the entire vector space Rm, if and only if a has a pivot in every row. And as we've seen, that's equivalent to t being an onto linear transformation. Now we can generalize this idea to general vector spaces. So if v and w are vector spaces, and t is a linear transformation from v to w, this is defined in the same way. So a function here is linear if t of v1 plus v2 equals t of v1 plus t of v2 and t of cv is equal to c times t of v. It's the same two criteria for linearity, but it works for general vector spaces. So the kernel, or sometimes the null space, of this linear transformation t that's the set of all vectors v such that t of v equals zero. And again, here this should be the zero vector. And that is a subspace of v in the same way that the null space of a matrix is the subspace of Rn. Now the image, or sometimes called the range of this linear transformation t, is the set of all vectors w in capital W that have the form t of x for some x in the domain. And that, similarly to the column space, is a subspace of w. So we can take these ideas about null space and column space and apply them to general vector spaces.